From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. And welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. It is very difficult for me sometimes to give you some of the headlines if we didn't have a good news message for you at the end of the program. So don't tune us off. Stay tuned for good news at the end. First of all, fatal mass shootings rock U.S. again. Oh my, my heart has been so moved with all of the mass shootings out there. We're going to be discussing that in just a moment. And then, EU, the European Union, divided. The migrant crisis tests the limits of EU cooperation. In other words, um, you know, some are saying, hey, we got too many, you got to take some. No, we don't want any more. We can't take any more. They're having quite an argument over there in the EU over who will take more of the of the migrants. Then this one. Hamas says, all Israel will be ours. Oh my, and at the end of the program we will discuss that. It is so very, very important. They tell us that 60 million are going to come from all these Muslim countries and many of them in the United States of America. And among them are jihadists and ISIS murderers. God help America. Oh, yes. Remember I said, uh, has America changed? Oh, my, oh, my. You know, with the fatal shootings that we have been seeing around the United States, it just moves my heart, doesn't it? You take a look. Fatal mass shooting rocks U.S. again. And where is that? Attack in Oregon is the fourth shooting in an American college campus since August. Ten people were killed by a 26-year-old gunman. And then, whoa. Would new gun laws stop mass shootings? My Bible says in Exodus 20, verse 13, Thou shalt not kill. Yeah, but that's capital punishment. No, it isn't. Turn the page. 21, 12. He that smites a man, death shall surely be put to death. Leviticus 24, 17. He that kills a man, shall be put to death, no ifs, ands, or buts. And Jesus taught self-defense. The Bible makes it very clear what Jesus taught in Luke 22, 36. He said, if you don't have a sword, that's what they had in his day, sell your clothes and buy one. We need yes. to defend ourselves. Now, when Jesus saw somebody that had a need, what did he do? He helped them. He healed those who were sick, and he fed those who were hungry. Oh, we do need to be helping the migrants. But do we have a concern? Take a look, please, at this. Is there a danger? Ah, little girl on her daddy's neck coming over, the migrants, and going on your secret planting of up, whoa, to 75,000 Syrian Muslims begins in the United States. Now, the beginning is 10,000 coming in, and then they're going to get surge up to about 75,000. What will that mean? Already in North Dakota, Kentucky, North Carolina, Ohio, and Washington, influxes are coming in. ISIS plans on killing hundreds of millions in religious cleansing. Now, that's a report from a German reporter who was in Mosul, Iraq. And he said that when they come in, how do they accomplish this cleansing? By changing the law. Instead of the law of the land, they change it to Sharia law. Now, Sharia law, friends, altogether different than the laws that we have. Jack Sharia law is completely different than our laws. 
Here it is, four points. First of all, you kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. Secondly, you kill all homosexuals. Thirdly, you kill all apostates, your own, if they say one word against the Quran. And fourthly, they kill Christians. They've done that to three million already. I have the headlines to prove it. This is from the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, and he told a BBC radio interviewer that the United Kingdom needs to face up to the fact that some of its citizens, that's British Muslims, do not relate to the British legal system. Therefore, the British legal system needed to, at some point, adopt parts of Islamic Sharia law, a legal code based on the Quran, the sayings of Muhammad, and centuries of tradition. Now get ready for a shock. It has now emerged that Sharia courts with these powers have been set up in London, Birmingham, Bradford, Manchester with the network headquarters in New Eaton, Wickenshire. Two more courts are being planned for Glasgow and Edinburgh. And when they take over, they take over. Even the Sharia police are marching the streets of Germany and arresting people. They have it in Belgium and France and Denmark, and they're going to have it in America. Oh, yes. God help America. Well, not only, friends, uh, are the EU and the United States being targeted to, as a takeover, but so is Israel. They hate Israel. I'm going to go back about 300 years and quote somebody from London, England. He targeted this and opened our eyes uh, many, many years ago to this. Bishop Louth of London, England, proclaimed the message of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, 300 years ago, 1713. The prophecy without question relates to the latter ages of the world when Israel shall return to their own land. Well, they have. Rosh signifies those inhabitants of uh, Cynthia, from hence the Russians derive their name. This formidable invasion of the land of Israel, God will defeat. The Persians, Iran, Iraq, and Afghanistan from the east, the Ethiopians from the south, and the Moors, Libyans from the west, will join with Rosh, which is Russia, in this invasion. Now, who's going to join with Russia? Beijing, China will stand with Moscow, Hamas, all of Israel is ours. There you see it. And here's somebody, oh, we're holding our heads because all they want to do, Khomeini, the dark obsession with the Jews and Israel, he keeps talking about it. And Ahmadinejad, Iran is determined to eradicate Israel. And then, well, unleashing a nuclear race that could certainly be what happened when we signed the nuke deal. Khomeini calls death to America as Kerry Hale's progress on the nuke deal. Well, we've signed it. And you know, friends, I know that you recognize they're all joining together now. Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, and now Russia. Who's she helping? Syria. And that's one of the ones that will invade Israel, and then China will join with him. Jack, you've been preaching this forever. 1947, I got into the ministry, and I got a book by Dr. L. Sale Harrison on the Great Northern Confederacy, how Russia was going to lead Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, as based on Ezekiel 38, 39. And I thought I was the only one who ever taught it. 300 years ago, the Bishop Lowthy of England preach the same message that I've been preaching. And it's Ezekiel 38 and 39, verses 1 and 2. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the Russian prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. That is the translation in modern English today. Rosh is Russia in the Greek and Russia in English. It's the war of the latter years and the latter days, Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 8 and 16. And guess what? Russia's making the move now in the very nations. <clears throat> the Bible says it will happen. The bishop had it right. Persia is Ezekiel 38.5. They changed their name from Persia to Iran in 1932. Syria is Isaiah 17.1. In some... Chapter 83, verses 5 to 7. We have many more of these nations that this great British leader mentioned. It's all here, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be the bloodiest battle in history. And guess what? It's going to take place at Israel. Ezekiel 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2. 
4, twice in 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, and 29. 18 times the battleground is Israel, and they're fighting to get Jerusalem back from Israel. Now, here is why you better prepare to meet God. You Christians will say it'll be another thousand years. Come on, get into your Bibles. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you when it's going to happen. Matthew 24, 32, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So when you shall see all the signs of Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, and 21, all of them in connection with Israel being a nation, Matthew 24, 32, go back to it again, and in control of Jerusalem, that's it. Then everything will be fulfilled. It wasn't fulfilled in 1713 when Bishop Lally was preaching on it. Right, right. It's only been fulfilled since 1948. They now are the nation of Israel and they control Jerusalem. This is it, folks. We're there. If any of you, how can you be so dogmatic? I heard a Christian the other day say it could be another thousand years. You don't know your Bible. Why? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 32, that when the fig tree is blossoming, has become a nation and their control of Jerusalem, Joel 3, verse 2, that's when Armageddon takes place. What? Yes. Are you listening, ladies and gentlemen? Israel is the fig tree. Joel 1, 7, Hosea 9, 10. And they've been in charge since 1948 and in control of Jerusalem since 1967. All the signs had to be fulfilled in relationship to these two. We're the first generation in 2,000 years to see it. Are you ready? Here it is, Revelation 9, 14, 18. Loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. By these three was the third part of mankind killed fire, smoke, brimstone through an army of 200 million. It's going to be the most devastating thing in history, and it's atomic. Let me say it again. Why? By these three was the third part of men kill, fire, smoke, brimstone. Prepare to meet your God. Oh, absolutely, Jack. I love that. Prepare to meet your God. Armageddon is going to be a terrible time. But it's so wonderful to know that whenever the Lord comes, or if he should call me home tomorrow, he could. My niece was taken home to be with the Lord unexpectedly in an automobile accident. Kim, how wonderful she's with the Lord. We need to be ready any time. Are you ready? We can be forgiven of anything in the life. If only you'll open your heart to the Savior. Will you pray this prayer with Jack? As Jesus to be your Savior, Jack. If you pray this prayer, I can make you a promise. You will escape Armageddon, the bloodiest war in history. I'll keep you from the hour of testing that comes on the whole world, Revelation 3.10, the great escape. Pray it, Lord Jesus. I believe we are at the final moments and you've called Brother Jack back from a deathbed to warn us. I want you today, Jesus. I want to accept what you did for me on that cross as you shed that precious holy blood to wash away every stain of sin I've ever committed. I lay them all on you now, Jesus. Cleanse me, forgive me, save me. I pray it in your holy name. Amen. Oh, Jack, amen. Thank you for that great message today. And if you prayed that prayer, write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. You can have a new life right now, walking with the Lord, if only you opened your heart to him. I trust that you did. He'll take away everything you don't want there. I don't care if it's drugs or alcohol or what it is. You've been forgiven having Jesus in your heart. And now, our offer of the week, and I'll tell you, it's so important that you have it. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Ella. Oh, my friend, to order, have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. 
To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan 48007. In Canada, send your donation to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, Here's Rexella. Oh, so many people have so many burdens. I really love this closing statement. To ease another's burden, help to carry it. How very true. We need to put our arms around those in need. Looking forward to being in your home again next week and until then. Remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.